Okay then, welcome to my laboratory. I'm still playing with the go, uh, go to look circuit designed by Ground Loop and my own coils. And I found some interesting effects today that don't really have anything to do with free energy, but they do have to do with broadcast power, which is my own personal area of interest. So what we've got is the H-bridge circuit designed by Ground Loop. And I'm powering the logic side of that circuit with a 11.4 volt LiPo battery. This is the logic power here. And I will be plugging in the bridge side, the main power, with these two 11.4 LiPos. Uh, so that will give us about 24 volts because they're charged up. So there's the input, there's the input capacitor there as a filter. And I'm monitoring the voltage on that input capacitor with this cheapo digital multimeter. Power goes in to the bridge here. And the bridge is receiving clock signal from the signal generator. And this is the frequency that we're working with right now, slightly over 2 megahertz, to the switching logic of the age bridge which is switching at one quarter of that frequency so we're actually driving the using the output of the age bridge through this small load resistor driving the Tesla bifiler wound primary coil down there that's the Tesla bifiler And then sitting on top of the Tesla by filer is this special by filer wound secondary coil. It's wound with about 300 turns of uh, number 28 twisted pair, plastic insulated twisted pair. Uh, both of the windings, uh, both of the pairs are hooked together at the common bottom, and then there's two terminals at the top, one for each of the individual wires in the twisted pair. This was uh, done for an, another experiment a long time ago. I forget which one. Uh, so I'm <clears throat> then taking the output of this coil from one terminal there and from the ground terminal and charging the capacitor through a diode just like uh, GoToLook has been doing, except I don't have a bleeder resistor on there, or rather a uh, <clears throat> power dissipating resistor, I'm just charging the capacitor and then we're monitoring the voltage on that capacitor with the Simpson analog voltmeter over here and it's on the 60 volt scale okay so that's the basic setup then I've got <clears throat> this other identical Tesla by filer primary coil that I've put a tuning capacitor on in parallel this is a little adjustable air mica variable that I just happened to score for a dollar at the surplus store yesterday. So, and then uh, hooked across the output of this coil is a, an LED. So we have the coil, the capacitor, and the LED all hooked in series. And I'm just going to stack that right up on top like that, okay? So they're not electrically connected, they're just electromagnetically coupled. Uh, right, okay. Now, Let's make sure we have a clock signal, we have clock power, <clears throat> and I'll plug in the bridge power. This is uh, kind of hard to do while holding the camera, but <clears throat> we'll do it. There's that. That little spark is the inrush of current to uh, this capacitor here. And as you can see, we came up to 23.3 volts on this capacitor. Uh, this capacitor, righty righty. Okay, now we'll start the clock. These LEDs here are flashing, each one of them is flashing at 125 kilohertz. Uh, you can't see that because it's too fast for you to see. Okay, 
And uh, we weren't watching while it happened, but the voltage on the Simpson, that is on this capacitor, has already come up to 32 volts. And uh, look here, the LED attached to this coil here is glowing brightly. And tune the tuning capacitor, I guess you can see it brightening and dimming. So uh, that proves that we are a tuned circuit here. And I pick it up and you can see that the light goes away. Okay. And I can uh, change the capacitance of this coil down here and the light goes away. And uh, notice the distance here. I'm way up above this coil, which is the sender. I'm going to take this off for just a second and move uh, this coil to the side here. Get it out of the way. Okay. Now, without that coil in place, I don't see that light glowing until I get right down to the sender there. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> this coil, which is ex ex actually extracting power from here, is also somehow magnifying the power and, or radiating its own power uh, to light this LED at this distance from the sending down here. Okay, that's one very interesting thing. I think it's interesting, don't you? And then <clears throat> Next, what I've got is uh, I have a bank of LEDs here. This is uh, three of these LEDs in series. These are the same kind that are flashing there and are up there. They're ultra bright LEDs. These are three in series. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to disconnect the power, the top lead from the coil there, <clears throat> the secondary coil, <clears throat> and hook it up to one of my leads to the LEDs. Then I'm just going to take this one here and uh, touch it. I guess you can see that. See those LEDs there, glowing nice and bright? So I'm not, I'm actually insulated from the floor with my shoes, I'm not grounded myself. You can see that those LEDs are connected only through the green wire to the red wire which is coming from the top of this coil. The yellow wire isn't connected to anything except my fingers. Okay. Just tune that again, get it back there. There we go. And so now we're not extracting any power from this coil because I've disconnected it. But uh, as you can see, we're still magnifying the power from the bottom coil and getting it all the way up to the top to light this little LED. Okay, that's it. Thanks.